if you have children, you're going to want to know about deliverance. Because a lot of them attitudes and stuff you think is them is, is, is the devil. <laughs> they the devil ain't got a hold of them through them iPods and through that video games and through the music and through the sex and the videos and the and then they around ch children in school that are into wizardry and Harry Potter and witchcraft and and uh, now children are not afraid of the occult. The occult is becoming mainstream and people are getting entangled through tattoos and bloodletting and different types of things that Satan said don't touch it you know don't touch I mean the Lord said don't touch this stuff because this is Satan stuff and if you touch he has a right to possess what you touch if you touch it he can possess it you hear what I'm saying that's why Jesus said if your hand what did he say about your hand he said if your hand offends you what did he say do that means if your hand offends you then Satan can possess your hand you sin with your hand Satan can possess it now we know you're not going to cut off your hand but it was just an illustration that Satan can possess certain parts of you by your sin in them areas. If you sin in them areas, are you hearing what I'm saying? So uh, let's get into this. This was a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm going to do it because uh, my battery is low, actually. I'm going to do it this way. Um, go over here to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Now what I'm teaching is not for the five-fold ministry. See, this is the problem with church. We have, the preachers have become super in the eyes of the people, and the people think it's the preacher's job. And the, so, the, so the preachers are not equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, which is what you're here in the church for. You're here to be equipped to do the work. But see, the preachers are trying to do the work so that the saints, and the saints are watching the work. So much to the work, to point that the saints think it's not our work, it's the preacher's work. So we don't use all of this teaching and power and anointing. We're, getting, we're not using it because we think it's not our place until we get a title or position. But the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. Okay, so uh, you can't put that on the preacher all the time. You, like when you, something's going on, I remember years ago, uh, people would call me, and they would say, man, I'm going through in my home, man, something's in my house. You know, you ever had one of them calls where something's in my house and we can't sleep and it's like something and the kids are scared and, you know, we need you, to, can you, can you come over and pray? And these are Christians asking me to pray. And I'm saying, well, what's the difference? Now, I'm knowing I was anointed. I knew I have an intercessor gift. But I'm saying, but Lord, you said these signs follow those that believe, not those who are anointed, those who are gifted, those who are fivefold, those who are, are called. It's just those that believe. And if, you, and if you really want to get technical, it didn't even say those who had the Holy Ghost. Because the disciples were not filled with the Holy Spirit, yet they were casting out devils. Before the day of Pentecost, Peter and John them did not have the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, there was a cat over that wasn't part of them that the disciples saw was casting out devils. They said, Jesus, look at this guy's over here casting out devils. He ain't even part of us. Let's make him stop. He said, wait a minute. If he ain't, if he, if he, if he ain't, if he ain't scouting, he's gathering. If he's with us. If he ain't against us, he's with us. So this guy that wasn't even running with Jesus them understood the authority of the kingdom and start passing out devils without even sitting under Jesus. That should tell you right there, it ain't about all this, what you think, power, power, power. Are y'all there? And people are suffering, people in your family, and your life, and even you, are suffering for your lack of belief in your ability to do what the Bible says you can do. And the reason why is because we don't want to labor for deliverance. We want the quick, lay your hand on me, boom, I'm, I'm done. No, that's not... I've seen true deliverance sometime and it's like time. You know, it ain't always no quick instantaneous get free and, you, and it's over. Amen. You got sometimes people be laboring on three, four people are laboring. We used to, when we used to take people through deliverance years ago, you might, deliverance was an all day job. Amen. I mean, you might be six, seven hours working on somebody and the devil just sitting there just still growling. You just, come out and you getting tired so somebody else to take over. You had tag team the enemy. But that's what it takes. But our love for the person 
and our hatred for the enemy motivated us to stay there to get that person free. Y'all Luke chapter 11. Look at verse 20. It says, but if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. So Jesus is acknowledging the existence of demons, right? Amen. And he's saying that the, when he encountered demons, his job was not to debate or to give the person a bunch of head knowledge on the demon. It was to confront the demon and drive that spirit out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Many times, I know we don't want to hear it because we are very spooky, spiritual, <laughs> superstitious, whatever you want to call it. We don't like to believe that our children are under demonic attack. For some reason, we, we like to explain in a way. I talk to my wife a lot about it, about how sometimes Satan's, Satan would, has trained us through education, science, and all that to explain away yeah. demonic activity. Amen. We explain it away so we don't have to deal with it. Amen. Once we say, oh, y'all, that's just, that's just ADHD. Right. Now we've explained it away so now we can, oh, what does that mean? Well, there's a system set up for it. Let's get some pills. Let's get them on some medication. We've explained away this behavior. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So a lot, I'm not saying every time, don't get spooky, there ain't no devil behind everything. But there are cases uh, where a child is under demonic attack. And I know I was when I was a child, my people didn't know nothing about it, but I, cause they was, we were heathens, but I knew, you know, we were under demonic attack because we had, we had fear that was unbelievable. You know, my people, you know, we opened the door, they opened the door to fear cause they let us watch everything. And when, by the time we done seen the exorcist and uh, um, the shining, I mean, this stuff that was just like two. And, you know, you, you're a little child looking at the shining and the exorcist. And this girl's head spinning around and nobody's explaining to you that this is, is it real? Is it not? I don't know. I heard it was real. I don't know. And you lean into your, and so you begin to form as a child your own. And Satan allowed, Satan got that seed through that movie to work on a child. So a child will start to think of, meditate, obsess, obsess is better. The first part, the first stage of possession is obsession. A thought comes you can't get rid of. You just keep meditating, thinking about it, thinking about it. It's called obsession. I'm not going to get into that tonight, but I just want to help you. So usually because we have been exposed to the demonic without understanding, without people knowing, that's why our parents' job you listen, your main job is to shield your children from the demonic. There's a realm of the demonic they should be shielded from, and that's your job because they're too young to decipher or to even resist evil. They don't understand evil. I remember when we was growing up, just a young little kid meddling with grown teenagers. They were old, my older sister them. They outside playing Bloody Mary. I knew that day, when I look back, I said I had to get a spirit that day because it put so much fear in me, I couldn't believe because I'm sitting there listening. I'm a child taking it in, absorbing this ritual. It was a ritual. I don't know, I ain't going to tell y'all what it was. I don't want nobody to give, but you know, it was a ritual. And so, we were, I was so, I vividly, for, for, for years, thought I saw this. Right, right. Because I overheard them talking about it. If you do this, this will happen. Right, yeah. And we were exposed to that. And there was a spirit of fear working on me as a child. And because you grow up with parents that don't understand spiritual matters, Amen. they'll say, oh boy, go to bed. Never dismiss, don't be dismissive when your child is telling you they're scared. Amen. Oh, you got to grow up. Don't do that. You don't understand that there is something spiritual going on in that child's life. So as a result of the fear, when I was a little child, I started wetting the bed. That was a manifestation of the fear. 
And because, you know, we black parents, we don't, especially we don't pay no attention. Most parents know white or black, they don't pay no attention. We what you tell, boy, you better quit peeing a bit. They don't know there's a reason my little, my, 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 my spiritual condition is manifesting in my natural. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I remember vividly wet in the bed. I remember it like I remember laying there doing it. Wasn't no sleep waking up. I was I was right there. It was it would but it was manifesting. The fear was coming out in my in the natural. But but my people was very dismissive, you know, you know, boys you ain't supposed to be scared and you know, they telling you that, but that don't help you when you're feeling forces. Come on, talk. Please talk to me. When you're feeling forces that you don't understand, you can't explain, and your little mind is seeing. Matter of fact, one of the worst things that they that, that, that they allowed us to do is there were some older boys that live in the other block, and they could get into the Kentucky. I don't know if y'all know the theater on Fourth Street. Yeah. Remember the Kentucky would show you go there for probably a dollar and sit in there all day and watch four or five movies in a row. And if, as long as you was with an adult, you could be this big and go on a rated R movie. Yeah. And because they were older than us, they would, they would take, we would go to the movies with them and sit there and we watched something. I still remember that movie to this very day. I've never seen it on DVD. I've never seen it again. But in that theater, there was a movie that was so scary to me that it literally gave, I had nightmares over this movie. And I dated them. Our people didn't understand that a child should not be exposed to that level of a child doesn't have the ability of experience to know reality from fantasy. And so because we were exposed, you can the same thing with Pornography or sex. Because back years ago, the Playboy Channel was on regular basic cable. And you could unscramble it if you knew what you were doing. <laughs> and we tried to unscramble that. But we had friends that they people just had it on. When you go over their house, and they were just watching it like it's a soap opera. And your little eyes is popping out of your head. You don't understand. You can't. And you're getting exposed to the demonic. And Satan is planting seeds in us that he's going to capitalize on later Amen. when he send his demonic forces after you he going to get up get you obsessed with what you've seen Amen. to cause you to open the door by your obsession Amen. just do you understand what i'm saying so i'm not really trying to explain the existence of demons you if you don't know that then you know hey i don't know what to tell you what i'm telling you is Everybody needs basic deliverance. Deliverance just means get the devil out. And, there, and the devil, he's in areas of our life. He don't necessarily mean that because now for years, let me get deal with this real quick. I've heard for years that Christians can't have devils because, you know, God, God, God won't have an unclean temple. What they don't seem to understand, you ain't clean all the time. If you sin and you ain't clean, so Amen. the devil can inhabit any darkness. Yes. Understand what I'm saying? Satan inhabits sin. Sin is his domain. If I really, I wish I did. It's like he has a pocket. Just, just think about it like this. He got a deck of cards with all sin on it. And he had a card for the, all you all. Fornication, that's me. Yes. I can come now because he flipped the card. This is, this is, this is, I can come to collect on what you 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 mess with my stuff I have a right to possess my stuff and my stuff is sin so get over that Amen. he can possess sin so this is why we preach so much against sin because he's trying to possess the sin that you are in Amen. and if the sin does not happen to be in you then he will possess you Amen. he may not he can't possess your spirit as a Christian listen can't possess your spirit because that's already has is occupied by God. Amen. But when a Christian is in willful sin, he will torment you. He will torment you to death. Amen. Even though your spirit 
is born again, he still will torment you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So you have to understand that we have been bamboozled by terms. Like we're splitting hairs. Well, this, well, the devil can't possess you if you're a I've heard that for years, and the very people said it was possessed. Amen. No, they weren't foaming at the mouth, rolling on the floor. Rah, they weren't doing that. But they had habits, yes. spirits of lust. No matter how much they fasted and prayed, they couldn't break it. Amen. Because you don't pray about a demon, yes. you command spirits. Yes. So preachers taught them that all they had to do was pray and that would be enough. But yeah. they didn't teach them, but you got to command, use your, the keys of the kingdom. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. You got to use that binding power that Jesus gave us Amen. in order to remove the enemy. Y'all got what I'm saying? See, most of the time, especially in your children, especially in your teenagers, you, 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 you should know why they the way they are. If you go in a room, you can figure it out real easy. What they into. What they're what they watching. What, they, what the music they're listening to. Because we know now Satan puts uh, 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 demonic forces in music yeah. to ride in, they, in, their, in their mind through sound. Amen. That's how he's getting in. Did he not get in our life like that? That's how he got in our life. That's why every song is lustful. It's spiritual lust on the music. He uses the artists. Those girls, they use it like Nicki Minaj, Beyonce. They got spiritual lust on them. And he uses them to release a spirit of lust. So, and so then he gets the lustful producers to write lustful songs that they channeling from the spirit world. And they using those artists to channel the, 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 channel the, the intention. Y'all ain't catch what I'm saying. The artist is channeling the intention of the song. The intention is to release lust. The same way though them, them guys go in the, in, the, in the studio and smoke weed and then all of a sudden these demons of murder come in and these guys come up with murder lyrics and they start channeling the intention of the spirit. So you're going to be amused for Satan or amused for God. A muse is an empty vessel waiting to be inhabited by another entity in order for that entity to act its will through. And if you're into sin, you'll be a muse for the enemy. Demons will come and inhabit and begin to act through you. Or if you yield to God, you'll be a muse for the Holy Spirit to do good works. I'll talk to me. I, I understand it so far. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to break it down for even a child level. I'm trying to get it to the finite so you understand this. So you're not afraid. You just understand that we're talking about two kingdoms that messing with one will possess you. That's what we're talking about. Two kingdoms. If you, we haven't been taught about the other kingdom very often. Really won't know about the kingdom of God either, but we ain't really been taught about the enemy's kingdom either. Amen. So when Jesus came preaching, what did he come preaching? He said something about the kingdom of God, but what was he? But what did he talk about the most? The enemy. He cast out devils more than anything else. He talked about the enemy. Satan is a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. He's talking about the enemy. I come to undo the works of the devil. I'm coming to undo his kingdom in your life. I'm coming. What does that mean? I'm coming to unwrap you, to loose you. So Jesus' ministry was a ministry of deliverance. I'm coming to free you from what you've gotten entangled in through ignorance. Because you don't know in the spirit that you're getting tangled by you when you sin. And you just think it's enjoyable. Until you try to pull back one day and say, oh, I'm caught. You ever been caught and knew you were caught? Then you're talking about fear. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and now, you, now, you, now you're praying. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So we, so we have to understand basic uh, deliverance. And I'm saying this especially for our children. As you get older and you become more mature, your natural, what, what I want to say, your age begins to slow you down. As you notice, as you get older, you, you're more cautious. 
you're not as risky as you used to be. I notice that all the time. You know, when you're young, you just run and jump off something, and you get old, you, you, your mind think real quick, like, well, wait, wait, you know your need. <laughs> your mind, you start thinking. You don't do stuff you used to do when you're young. When you, when you like, you know how you, like, my son, they'll run and jump off this, and if I, I think about that, nah. <laughs> you get cautious. Because your, nat, your age, your body starts slowing down and showing you your limitations, and you would get caught because you know, look, I can't, I can't afford to break my leg or my knee. I ain't, I'm too young. I ain't, I ain't young like I used to be. So as you get older, just by age, you slow down and you give, and you should, not every time, but you really start giving demons less and less opportunity as you get older. But when you're young, you, you, everything's open for you. Right, what, what can I get into? You, you know, we went looking for that. We were looking for Satan. All every day we were looking for him. Where, what club is he in? Where is he at? What's the new sin out? We want to we want to see as you get older, if you notice, you was young and you looked at old folks, man, man, they dance is so silly. That's so silly how they dance like that. Then you got older, you like, I can't do all that stuff no more. Just by being older, you're like, I don't do that. You, you get more more cautious and you walk, you even walk with caution. You get scared. You get scared. You know, you get, you get a little cautious when you're older. You, when you're young, you're walking, man. See a young nigga on cool there. I don't know. You get older, you see some young dudes. You, you don't know what just, man, should I go to them? You cross the street. <laughs> cautious. You've lived long enough to understand that bad stuff can happen. And y'all know what I'm saying. But, when it, but as a child, you are trained through media, music, movies, everything is programming. I was telling my wife today about programming, even watch this cartoon stuff. This stuff is the evil. This stuff is more evil than even, I mean, it is evil than some of the movies. It is evil what they pro program these children with. Because really what they're doing with children is programming them to, to, to relieve in spirits in a good way. That's what they're doing too. That's why all these, these cartoons now look floating demon, look floating, look devil looking stuff. These little girls are into these death culture, these death God the girl, these death looking stuff. Talk, I'm, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, let me get on. But you, as, when you're young, you don't have the ability to, you don't have experience on your side. So you walk blindly. That's why you need to be covered by your parents. And, but what does the culture teach you? It's what it taught us. What does it teach children? Rebel. Your daddy don't know nothing. It teaches you to really, it teaches you always, it teaches you against the father. Every movie teaches you the father's too hard, the father don't understand, he's a buffoon, he's an idiot. You see, you see what I'm saying? It teaches you that. It teaches you that the child is smarter than the parent. This is what it's teaching. So that the child will get in their mind and they're being programmed. Think about all of the movies you seen when you was coming up where they don't just they don't understand. They just don't understand me. And all of a sudden this child gets this runaway mentality. I want to just go for myself. Where did that come from? They were programmed through, through all these movies. They programmed to think that way. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So say it's my job. It's your job as a parent to protect your idiots. They don't know nothing. They are in, the Bible says foolishness is in their heart. It's in the heart of a son. They idiots. They have not had enough experience to know right from wrong. They think they know. They know how to go do wrong. They don't know how to do right. So your job is to protect them when they're young till their mind develops and can distinguish good from evil because good is, I mean, evil is wrapped up to look Good. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So this this is how parental. So so then we know we can't be with them every day. Satan's busy. Amen. They're gonna get a hold of things. They're gonna get friends in their life, which that's your job too. We screen folks. We had a situation on our block, and I was and, and my daughter was out there playing. And I looked up the block, and I said, baby, 
I don't want them kids there down here. I don't want, no, Hannah don't need no friend. Not that friend. It just, as a parent, knowing foolishness. I saw the mama. I knew by looking at the mama if, if what's going to happen. Somehow the little girl, Hannah skating, the little girl slid up, they talking, they get cool. Now here come the little brothers and everybody. Now they coming down, now they hanging on our fence. Now they, now they cussing in front of our house. Now they throwing rock. Now they, then you look at the mama, come get your kids and they. But I telepathically <laughs> saw that knowing this is coming. I lived in the, I know, if I don't know nothing else, yeah. I know ghetto. Yeah. Amen. And I know sometimes these little ghetto kids are like hey. scouting ants. Yep. <laughs> they send their kids to scout out and get, and get off in your life through the children. Yeah. I've seen, I, I mean, the, Grew up, done been there. Oh, I apologize and I see it. Amen. All of a sudden, we call the police on these little kids now. We call the police. Because, I mean, I ain't going to choke them. I had to call the police on them. My, I'm, I got to keep them. I got sons. I'm like, nah, don't you. Can't get my, can't, I don't want them in trouble. Amen. This little kid's got to be hostage now. But I, I seen it coming. It's my job as a parent to foresee and to scream and to sift these relationships that my children enter into. Even if they don't like it, me and my kids ain't friends. They are my friends now. As they get older, the Bible says that. They become, as they get older, they become equal with the father. But when they're young, they like a servant. The Bible says ain't no greater than a servant as long as he's the immature and young. But as my children get older, they become my friend. They grow them like my teachers are friends. That's my, my son, man, man, he's becoming my friend. It's, it's based on his maturity. I ain't no friend of no child. I tell a child what to do. We ain't friends. We don't eat together. I eat with my wife. Y'all figure out what y'all gonna eat. We gonna go out and we eat. Food in the refrigerator. <laughs> Me and my wife is friends. We don't, but, but that's, that's not had nothing to do with love. And we, of course we love. You know, we love them, love them some, a little bit too much. But the point I'm making is, is we understand our role of protection first. So we were protecting them. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. I scream the kids when they come around my children. Yeah. I look at these little kids and nothing. There was some kids here I had to scream. Like, wait, this little boy got sexual urge. He's sexual. Look, child, look, child. Four years old, sexual. You can see it's, it's what sexual. I said, you know what? Somebody touching him. Some older child's touching him. His mama don't know. Some cousin is touching him, and so he don't know no better because he's being molested or touched at an early age or being exposed to sexual things. And now he's doing sexual things because that's all his little mind, his whole little life, that's all he knows was sexual stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I had to make sure, wait a minute, let me scream because I don't want you to, you know, evil communication corrupt good manners. So I had to scream. That was my job. So when you do that, you give Satan less opportunity to sow his seed yeah. into your child. Are y'all are y'all there? I don't know why. Why am I saying? Why am I talking? Y'all need. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You got to protect your seed. Are y'all there? And then once they get teenagers, whatever sown in them is in them. They gonna act the way they gonna act. You still stand on it. Don't give in. Let them know it's it's my way or the highway. Really, it ain't the high, it's the low way. <laughs> You're going to go the low way, that prodigal son way, that pig pen way. You're going that way first. Amen. By the time we see you again, you're going to appreciate. Y'all heard what I'm saying. All right. Let me give y'all some, a uh, little bit of this. So we so, so, demons do exist, amen? amen? Now, 
there are two equal and opposite errors in which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive unhealthy interest in them. You have to be careful when you start getting into spiritual warfare and deliverance because you have a tendency to, especially now with the internet, to go or get online and start trying to find all the information and you start studying darkness. Instead of, start, instead of keeping his focus on the light, you start studying darkness. That's a great deception that Satan has for, for people who have zeal, but not according to knowledge. People who are passionate about the things of God, they'll start studying. When they get into spiritual warfare, they'll start studying the devil too much. Are you hear what I'm saying? And, and there'll be, it's a fine line in studying the devil for spiritual warfare and getting involved in the occult. Oh, I said some y'all didn't catch what I man. Who am I preaching to? Maybe this is for China. There's a thin line I'm trying to help you. When people get in, that's how people get. You ever seen get this get spooky? Because they don't got too much information about Satan to where they have too much. They have an unhealthy belief in his ability because they are not studying the Word of God and and the goodness of God and the grace and the mercy of God. They don't know God's power. It's, 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 it's greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world because they study in Satan too much. So it's good to know, but it's not good to develop an obsession. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So our job is to, we don't go looking for demons. <laughs> I ain't no demon hunter. Or no, whatever they call it. We hold the hip hop and just have all kinds of names. Demon killer. And like, man, you nigga ain't no demon killer. Do you know what you're talking about when you're talking about demon killer? The Bible says Michael the archangel wouldn't even say nothing wrong. He just said the Lord rebuke you. He understood the power of this dark realm. You don't understand demon killer and devil send the demon at them for real, real demon. And they be, they be out there rapping in the world like Lecrae. Be out there be drinking now, now leading, lead, you become, you don't become, you're going you to be a little Pied Piper leading the youth into worldliness. They're accepting worldliness now. And they, and, and, and all of us because, oh, he crossing over, oh, he's on billboards, so what? He's, he, he's on her because he's saying what the world won't hear. The Bible says beware when they speak well of, of you. They speak well of the false prophets. Whenever the world like you, you're an enemy of God. The Bible says to be a friend of the world, be an enemy of God. If the world ever give you a war, then that means you must get dust from God. If the world give you a war, you're getting dust from the Lord. Whatever is esteemed in the eyes of men is nothing. It's dung in the eyes of God. So I don't want the world to know me like that. If they know me, they better know me for talking crazy. They better know me for cutting you, cutting with this word to the point that you want to put your teeth and bite me. Amen. That's how you're going to know me. Amen. So they think it's something because the world is giving them awards. I'm like, that's exactly what Satan is. He's buying you. He's buying you now. So how is it Christian artists are going through the Illuminati rituals? I ain't getting into that. that but that's another way of protecting your children. Because that, that holy hip hop was a way for the devil to get to your children without, without you even understanding what's going on. Amen. And that's why I told y'all, I, 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 I used to love Christian rap. I, I, I still like it. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with it. When they, when they say they want God, they live for Jesus. I don't got a problem. I, I was a producer. I had albums. Like we used to have Christian albums. We produced Christian rap. So I didn't have a problem with it. I just started saying, wait a minute. If you got to take your style from Jay-Z, then you ain't getting nothing. From what you getting? What The Holy Ghost ain't got nothing to do with this. If I got to look like the world when the Bible says we are a peculiar people, we look different, then we have a problem. Why can't I rap in a suit? If you, if you really looking for Jesus, why I got to have the, 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 the thug look? For you to respect me as a Christian. No, no, no. So I start seeing these cats is 50 ain't changing. These cats is 50 years old, ain't grew up. Running around rapping, 50 years old, gray haired granddaddies up in church rapping, and it's like, dude, this is bull. What you it's crap. All of it's 
if I want to hear, if I want to see you, if I want to hear something like the world, I can bypass this. Let me just go get Kanye. I don't need to see you rapping like I go get them. I go hear Lil Wayne when I want to. They brought this stuff in the church, and and, and, and it was uh, it was out from up under spiritual supervision. Preachers couldn't rebuke it. Preachers couldn't correct them. When a preacher correct them, they run over here with their little youth club. Reject it. See, the, the church is hating on her. They hating on it because it ain't of, it, all that ain't of the Lord. You bringing some garbage in the gospel. I said it. And so they became Pied Pipers. What happened? Okay, uh, uh, let me, I ain't getting into this. But I, I, I'll give you a little bit just to show you I'm up on my game. What, what, you know, the, you know, the truth. You remember the truth? The guy that was rapping, he was trying to rap a little bit like Jay Z. What happened? Well, he got an adultery. Well, that's <laughs> what happened to New Wine. New Wine was like Tupac. Was one of the greatest Christian rappers I heard. This brother was anointed, had anointed. He had a song that had you worshiping. Two years later, he's talking about slanging Sally and hit on the button. He's he's putting out stripping music. Y'all there? So I saw saying, wait a minute, this these guys is trying to get to the world. These are church boys trying to get to the world. And they all become Pied Pipers. Lecrae, beautiful rap, beautiful flow. Loved the brother when he first came. Loved him. They had no problem with him. All of a sudden, you see interviews where drinking ain't wrong no more. Getting a little high ain't wrong no more. But if that ain't wrong, then fornication ain't wrong either. You know, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can get on stage with all the, the gangster thug cussing rappers, and I'm just. So then, what are you doing? How you gonna go? How you gonna go in a, a whole stage full of full of hell? Everybody's talking about death, murder, and hell, and cussing, and then you're going to say, Jesus, your Jesus is just being drowned out by the uh, atmosphere you're in. So when they go, so do the people following them. So that's why I had to treat my son, wait a minute, man, we ain't going to get caught up in this. I said, just wait, just look at them, just wait. You'll see, just, wait, just give them some time. They all dominoes, just like the preachers. Whenever you want fame, you're going to fall. It's part of fame, it's part of Satan's domain. Can I get on? Okay, let me get, let me, let me get on because I want to talk a little bit. I want to have get this out. Okay, another point is delivering a person from a demon depends upon the will of the individual who is possessed. It, a person has to want to be free. That's why people try to say, well, well if y'all really were saved, why don't y'all go to the to the hospital? Why don't y'all go to the to the crazy ward and get them free and heal them? The Bible says there was a man in the Bible that laid at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. When Jesus came up, he said, Do you want to be well? That means the man was laying there. The, the, the Bible says the angel come down once a year, trouble the water. Whoever got in the water got healed. This man was laying there for 38 years with, with his healing right there. All he had to do was roll his butt in the water, but he slipped. He sat there and complained and murmured about he didn't have nobody. He was comfortable in his sickness. He didn't have a will to be healed. That's why, what, so when Jesus came, did Jesus say, get up? No, he said, dealt with his, he dealt with his will first. Do you want this or not? So a person has to want this. Oh, y'all didn't catch what I said. You want to know why people don't get healed all the time? Because they don't want it to get healed. Everybody don't want to get healed. Some people like the attention from being sick. You ever talk to people, they start running, oh, my back hurt, my leg hurt, and I'm on insulin, I'm on all of I'll get away from it, people. I don't want to hear that, man. I got enough problems. I don't want to hear about no diabetes. If you ain't trying to get healed, I don't, I don't sit around sickness. That's contagious. I don't sit around sick. Don't sit around you know, hey, you can love grandma and them. You know how our people talk negative. This, you know, they talk that dough negative, talk that all right. And my leg hurt, broke up this morning. Okay, well, I'm praying for you, grandma, but I'm gone. Because I don't sit around sickness. That spirit of sickness and infirmity is what it's called. You sit around it. That's why have you ever seen a young cat hang around old folks and that guy will be old. He'd be 20 years old and be walking with his pants pulled up to her, walking slow, old, glasses on old. He, he hang around these old cats. <laughs> Y'all ever seen that? I've seen it. That brother, ain't, he, he walks slow. Brother, 20 years old, walking like this, walking slow. He been around old people. That's how you know he's been hanging around old people. His whole life, he's been around old people. He's sick all the time. He talk that old talk. He talk that old broke talk when he pull out his money. 
Old, old talk. He's old. <laughs> Negro's old, man. He's old. He's old. He's old, man. Clothes old. Old clothes. Everything's old. He's been around old people. I love old people, but the, I don't hang with them. I can't hang with you. Love you. I don't hang with you. Because the old people said, I'm talking that old talk. You know, my back hurt, my leg. You know, yeah, I got to go to the doctor. My blood pressure, doctor, and blood pressure. That's all they talk about is that what's wrong with them. That's their conversation. That and the weather. We ain't knocking them. We love them. But I mean, I don't sit around it. I don't get, I don't sit around it. Because that stuff, because you, you will find yourself saying, yeah, my back hurt. You be, you start agreeing with that stuff. Yeah, my foot hurt too. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> Have you agreeing? Well, I'm, maybe I'm getting all right too. Now you 18. Get away from her. Leave. Don't mean we don't love them, but I just don't. You just don't sit up talking about you know. When you get old, that's what you are gonna do. You are gonna get around old boy. Y'all gonna sit up talking about how you know I, I, you know I, I got a five time to pee last night. You gonna talk? So you gonna talk? What else you got to talk about? You done did all your sin and you're old. You can't go nowhere. You can't do nothing. That and what the pot. That's in the pot. What we putting on the pot today. What's the pot? That's it. That's your conversation. So I don't sit around that. I don't, try, I don't be around. I don't like being around it. You know, if I'm, I pray for your love on, hey, how you doing? I'm gone. Y'all there? So deliverance depends upon the will. Are y'all there? Matter of fact, Jesus saw a man laying there and learned that he had been in that condition for a long time. He asked, do you want to get well? Let me give you another practical point of deliverance. Deliverance should never be undertaken under pressure either from the individual or the group concerned. It should only be attempted if there is a clear sense of direction from God. In other words, this happens to me a lot. People come and just want you to pray for them. And they expect you to go and just start working on getting in the spirit with them and you don't even know what level this person might be what le demons have rank Amen. and you don't know what rank this is you don't know what devil what this this person might have a, a demon from jupiter that's a whole nother understanding you do know demons ain't they not uh, the fallen names are not they not bound to this realm you do know there's places you do know that's what's on other planets it's different to me <laughs> All you talking about, all, all, all you talking about is dimension. You just can't see in that dimension, but there's other, just like the spirit realm is another die. I ain't got time to talk about that. But there's spirits from other places anyway. It might be a ruler spirit. It might be a fallen angel <laughs> in his cat. And here you are, this is the second demon next to Satan. <laughs> Satan's right hand dude, and you ready to cast him out. You don't know what level it is. You ain't, you ain't did no study, and you ain't prepared yourself to know what, because, so that's why, you know, that's, that's how people show up. Pray for me, man of God. Wait a minute. I ain't telling you I'm all that. I ain't telling you. I ain't. I ain't trying. Look, I'm gonna. Start, I got the what? Who? What, what you been in? It's okay to do homework on when you're doing deliverance. You, that's one of the main things you do. When we take people to deliver, we never try to deliver them on a Sunday on a prayer line. You come and we say, okay, come on, come back Tuesday night. Then we go prepare, praying and fasting, praying and fasting, and study whatever you've been in our cup. We're gonna go study a little bit, find out what kind of strongholds these are. So we come and prepare. We just give you no drive through deliverance on the spot deliverance because I don't know what you've been in. Amen. That thing might be strong. Amen. I gotta check my spiritual tank and see if I got enough to, to, to battle this. I might start a battle with you. This thing might have me there three hours fooling with you. I gotta know, do I have enough come out for three hours? I gotta know that. Amen. So I'll say, no, nah, let's, you know, just, you know. So I assess a person a little bit. You know. Then when you start talking like, Okay, you, you want to get free, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, you, you fornicating? Well, I'm, I, I'm in a relationship. Well, you gonna, you gonna cut that out because you know it's sin, and this sin is what's helping to keep strong hope. But when you ain't ready to, oh. See, people don't want to come out of their sin. Uh, that's why I say you gotta assess whether they truly want to be delivered. Now, when it comes to your children, you ain't gotta worry about if they want to. You have authority, you have jurisdiction. You ain't gotta ask them. They under your authority. That gives you spiritual jurisdiction. Are you understand what I'm saying? So I ask people, do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? You know? And they, you know, and, 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 and so a lot of times we we'll tell people, okay, fast a little bit. Come to church. Pray fast. Get at this altar. 
Cry out for the mercy of the Lord. Get saved. People want deliverance ain't even saved. What you want God's benefits for? You don't want service. You want no. You might as well go get you a witch doctor to put a potion together to try to get you. That ain't gonna help you anyway. So if you want, so what I'm trying to tell you is, you should never be under pressure to 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 to, to try to enter into deliverance with anybody. If you don't know, you gotta. The Bible says, "Know those that labor among you." I need to know who is this person, where you come from. What you've been in, some witches come all the time for the, acting like they want deliverance. And the witches come in here and test your power. Witches come to churches and they'll test your power. And they'll see if you're powerful. They'll go in the church and see how powerful that church. They'll sit right there and lift, they'll be back there like this and everything. They don't care nothing about that. They know if a church is powerful or not. And they'll come right in that prayer line. And if, and if a man of God ain't curved, he touch him, he, he, he end up getting cursed himself. I'm, this is this is this is this is real stuff. I've learned enough to know. That's why Paul said, "Lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't just be going lay hands on folk. You don't know who they are." Is this is this too deep? I'm trying to do basic, but I do want y'all to understand that everybody that's 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 talking about delivering don't necessarily want to be delivered, because guess what happens when a person wants deliverance? They life line up with it. They start. The first thing they start coming to church, they start praying, they start fasting. Whatever you tell them to do, they'll do it. Fast for three days, okay. They'll fast for three days, okay. Because they want to be free. But, but a lot of times when you see people, they, they, they barely come, they ain't coming all the time, they come when they want to. They, they just want to get, they just tormented. They don't like to torment, but they're not tired of what they're doing. They still love their sin. They just want to give me some relief. Now, y'all know people come like that all the time. Give me some relief. But they don't really want to be, they don't want to live for, live for the Lord. Are y'all there? We must be convinced that God has authority over everything. And the practice of deliverance is no place to bring our doubts. That means if you don't feel comfortable with something, don't do it. Amen. Don't get under pressure to, to respond. And y'all know we're going out on, on the streets, we're praying for folk. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do stuff you don't feel comfortable with. Just to try to show you spiritual, you're trying to show off in front of people. Because how many of y'all know it ain't going to matter if something get a hold of you, no matter what, don't be, be deep. Don't try to take on stuff by yourself. When you pray for folk, that's why I send y'all out when we go up our two by two. Go out and pray for people together. Don't be by yourself praying for folk and stuff like that because there are things that are, that are strong. Amen? We're not giving the devil no credit, but we are understanding that you'll be a fool to underestimate your enemy. When a person is doing deliverance, you do need to have some knowledge, a little bit of understanding of psychology. Not a lot. You ain't got to be deep in it. The reason why I'm saying it is because a lot of what people are, if you notice, people that come from deliverance always have some psychological issue. You need to know when a person say they, they, they paranoid schizophrenic, you, know, you need to know what kind of demon that is. It's a spirit. You need to know what kind of spirit it is. Uh, Y'all heard what I'm saying? When a person going off in epileptic fits, you need to know what, what is that? That's a deaf and dumb demon. Same demon that threw the boy in the water and the fire in the Bible. The disciples couldn't get it out and Jesus had to come get it out. Deaf and dumb demon. Now what if you're sitting there trying to cast spirit out you don't even know what you're talking about. What is this? So you got to have some type of knowledge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? That's why it's good. Now, I teach a lot about that. So you know, don't, don't go study psychology, but have, have basic understanding. When somebody say bipolar, know what they're talking about. When somebody say post-traumatic... I mean, uh, 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 when somebody say uh, uh, um, anxiety, that's the spirit of fear. Amen. Know what that is. They even got, they, did you know they got about six names for the same thing? Six names for fear. Amen. If, you, if you're scared of going outside, that's a whole other name. Right. It's all fear. Yeah. All of it's fear. But they're going to keep diagnosing the person different. you scared of clowns. That's another fear. Arachnophobia. Fear of, oh, it's just all fear. Are y'all there? Amen. So having a little bit of knowledge, come on, this is practical. Having a little bit of knowledge of these modern psychological disorders is good. So when a person comes and likes to say you have some of your family and you start talking to them about the Lord and the Lord can set you free and I'm going to pray for you, if they talk to me, I'm, you know, I got diagnosed with bipolar, okay, well, all right, come back tomorrow, you know, and I'm going to go, and you stu go study bipolar, go, go study what is it, what does it mean? 
the knowledge is not, it's not wrong to have knowledge because the authority of Christ is what you're going to use. But demons are crafty. You got to have a little knowledge sometimes. There are demons named the psychological issue. There's a spirit called depression. There is a demon called depression. There's a demon called ADHD. These are spirits that take on names. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to know the name. To, 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 y'all understand? What I'm you remember when Jesus was the man, the man at the tomb of Gatherings, and Jesus told the, Jesus, did Jesus not tell the devil come out? Did he say come out? Did the devil come out? No. The devil didn't come. Jesus said come out. The devil didn't come out. Jesus said, "What's your name?" He said, "My name is our name's Legion, but we are many." He said, "All right." Now come out. See, if ever a demon manifests, you know the powers there to cast it out. If demon don't manifest, usually the spirit is either too deep or the person needs to go through some time of repentance and fasting to break the stronghold or persons in willful sin in that area. Come on, now, listen, now, y'all heard what I'm saying. So when we pray for people, don't try, if the spirit manifests, and that demon knows it can come and get cast out. Amen. Because a devil would never like to reveal itself. It's kind of like Rumpelstiltskin. I ain't telling you my name. They don't like to reveal themselves. Because the whole goal is to destroy you secretly, hide and killing you slowly. That's what they do. They are, they are like ninjas. They don't reveal who they are. But once the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority of God, arrest them, then they know, okay, you got me. You, got, you, have the, you, you, was, you had the ability to catch me spiritually and call me up. And then you, if, you if, they, if they ever manifest like that, you have to be willing, your intercessors hear me, you have to be willing to labor with that person after that. If, they ever, if it manifests, they even start talking out, you got to, now you got to, we got to say her. Because you can't let a person leave after that thing manifests. Because they can walk out in traffic after that. I mean, the devil, he's going to really put more, uh, he's going to bring, he's going to get, the spirit's going to call more spirits to stay in, to be, build a greater stronghold. So if they manifest, we got to have like, even if we got to take them downstairs and work, we got to work. If it takes eight hours, you ask what it takes to get people delivered. The devil will try to exhaust you in deliverance without make you tired. He knows the human body. We get tired. We get frustrated. We get into chaos. Everybody screaming at one time. And say, that's not how you do deliverance. One person should be the one commanding the enemy. One person, the other people are, slow, are softly interceding and in agreement. Y'all there? Come on, is this, is this, is this? Let me get, let me, I got to close. Let me get, can I, can I have, can you handle a little bit more? Come on, so this is basic deliverance. Usually with schizophrenia, the person's inner world and behavior changes notably. Behavior changes might include the following. Social withdrawal. This is what, when, when, even in yourself, many times spirits of depression try to latch on to Christians. You see it all the time. A person was so full of the joy, all of a sudden they, they get up one day and they're like, man, what's wrong? You, you try to praise God and it's like, duh, like you dry. Try to pray and it don't, it just like hit the ceiling and come back down. Because spirit of heaviness has just attached itself and it's trying to rob you of your, of your praise, of your joy. The, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Y'all got that. So that's what that spirit is designed to do. So when a person is under that level of attack, you need to know, wait a minute. Something is manifesting. I didn't, you got to know this stuff. I ain't feel like this. Look at your child. Look at the symptoms in your child. Let me give you a few symptoms. Social withdrawal. When you or your child, you sense strong, like you don't want to be, you want to withdraw all of a sudden. I mean, that, that can come on. You be like, I don't even want to go around him. I don't want to go to church. I don't want, that's something working on you. You're under attack. A sense of, uh, it's called depersonalization. It means a sense of, being unreal or hazy or surreal, like in a dream state sometimes. You know, uh, anxiety, loss of appetite, loss of hygiene. You know these people demon possessed walking down the street, why are they so dirty? You ever ask that? Why ain't demons clean? What did Jesus call them? Unclean spirits. When you see them possessed, these cats got on 20 layers. Just, you ever seen them layered up? Be hot outside. They got layers of blanket walking like, like they cool. They ain't even feel the heat. Because the demon is likes nastiness, dirtiness. So when people get when people go start losing their mind and demons possess them, they start laying up. Are y'all there? 
So it, these are just things you need to pay attention to. Delusions, hallucinations, hearing or seeing things that aren't there. The sense of being controlled by outside forces. Disorganized speech. These are just little symptoms that you need to be, um, you need to be aware of. Let's see. One more point. Let me give you a more point. Deliverance should never be attempted alone. There should be at least two mature, experienced Christians present, and it is preferable that one should come from another church to provide objectivity. Obvious care needs to be taken when dealing with members of the opposite sex. That's a big one. <laughs> they be over in Africa, man. These cats, <laughs> these preachers be delivering them, and they be having sex with the women. It's crazy what they be doing. Tell them, I'm going to give you a spiritual cleanse and take clothes off. <laughs> They do that in Africa. I'm telling you, they do it in Africa. Tell them, uh, 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 I'm a, I got to lay hands on you. <laughs> the, they say the spirit's in your private, so I got to lay hands. All that, they down there, it's crazy. So you can get into some trouble messing with these. You got no real people for flaky folk. Amen. But deliverance should always be with mature people. If, if, you're, if you, if you want to pray for your child, like one thing happened with Sister Sheena. Sister Sheena was was calling me and telling me that something was going on with Raymond. You know, and we talk about deliverance at this church. Yeah. Children are not immune. The devil, if he can't attack you, he will attack your child. Yeah. If he can't get you, he'll attack your child, because that's what, your child's going to send you through twisting. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to send you through enough changes. Just, they go, that child going to rob you of your joy. Yeah. So he's going to mess with that child. If he can't get you, if he can't come take your joy, he'll, that child will do something, keep getting in trouble in school, he's going to rob you yeah. of your joy. That's what he's trying to do. It shouldn't rob you. Because you should be like, all right, they don't, they don't stop me from feeling, I'm all right. Amen. You know, but my point is, you know, when you keep having to go through stuff, it, it gets to you. Got that? But she had called and she was saying that something's going on with her son and she saw this, she was an observant parent. She saw this twitch, like this little movement that wasn't godly. You know, and you can tell because kids, is, it, see, spiritual uh, attack manifests in, it manifests itself physically sometimes, especially in children. Have you ever seen a child sitting up bumping his head against the wall? This is manifestations of spiritual attack. Child's under attack. Parents don't know. Child's wet in the bed is another attack. Wet in the bed is, 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 is I'm, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to get you a word. Because then you can go deal with it. But anyway, she called and said, Pastor, you know, I've been praying for him. And, and it ain't going away. And he's, you know, she was worried. I understand that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a parent. I know, understand. I said, bring him to church. I said, we, gonna, we pray every night. Bring him to church. We'll, we'll pray for him. And... We'll far pray over him a little bit, and we did that, and it and, and that left him, yeah. that left him. So, the reason why I don't try to come out, jump off the stage, and die and heal people and all that, cause you need to know you can do this. You, I ain't gonna live with you. You need to know I can rise up in the authority Jesus has given me. If it's too much, call us. We pray every day. We gonna pray because that's what we do. But you don't have to, when you're praying for your child, you can have people that hear, that can touch and agree Amen. and intercede. And even if you need prayer. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm teaching this because I'm sensing we're going to have to get more into prayer like that. And I want you all of this to be aware. Amen. Let me see. In, in, in deliverance, when we are praying for folk or whatever, everybody should be treated with gentleness and kindness and respect. Understand your focus is the spirit. The person may look in your eyes and cuss you out. I've seen it happen. Look you in your eyes and call you some stuff, and you have to have enough spiritual sense to know where it, this, is, this spirit is trying to distract me and get me in my flesh when he knows I can't do nothing in my flesh. So spirits try to get you out of the spirit by getting into an ego test with you. Yeah. Trying to make you prove how strong you are and trying to talk to you and, and, get, you dis, and get you disconnected from your assignment. Yeah. That's why, what did Jesus tell him? Shut up. Shut up. Now I've seen deliverance ministers talk to him and you know, that's them. I don't have no conversation. I don't want to know what you got to say. I don't care what you got to say. I don't, I don't believe nothing you say anyway. I don't think the devil going to tell the truth, so I don't want to know. Just be quiet. Hold that peace. Come out. Hold your peace. Don't turn. Come out. Okay. Uh, there should be avoidance of aggressive words. 
gestures and expressions and, and we need to be relying on Jesus. That means we ain't challenging you, challenging the devil, you know. I hate you, you know, you ain't getting it. There ain't no flesh thing in this. You keeping it on Christ. You know, ain't no, ain't no personal thing with me. I'm trying to use the authority of Christ. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I've seen deliverance ministers do that. Get in the test of will with the spirit and they be there for hours. And that demon playing with them. It's playing with them. Pulling them in. They're using all their strength going back and forth instead of saying, shut up and come out. And they don't always come out right away. So you have to continue to say it. And continue to say it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When you're praying for your child, that's how you pray for them. Continue to say it. Amen. Don't always, if you see behavior, say behavior. behavior. Now, we're not talking about being spooky spiritual. We're only talking about if you see behavior. There are spiritual signs of attack. There are spiritual signs. You have spiritual, you're a Christian, you have spiritual signs of attack. Amen. We have, most of the time, Christians' attack is right here. It starts in the head. That's where our battle starts at, right there. Because we don't really, we shouldn't be sinning. So we don't really have a lot of attack coming anywhere else. It's usually up here in our head where it starts from. And God has given us ability to, just to do, deal with that. We can just cast down, boom, the thoughts. If we cast it down, it, those thoughts will go away. And you got to practice casting them down. Amen. But there's times sickness will try to come. Spirits of infirmity will try to attach. And, you know, and, and then you got to know what is, what, is, what is really physical and what is spiritual. Because the spirit of infirmity manifests physical ailments. So you have to know when it's spiritual, it seems to come out of nowhere. It just whoo, come out of nowhere. And it doesn't, um, it, 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 when it's physical, it won't respond to prayer. Your body does, will get sick. So sometimes it won't respond to prayer right away. When it's spiritual, it'll respond to prayer. But this is the reason why Satan has us run into the doctor first and accept the diagnosis when we probably need to go pray first and rebuke that thing, rebuke that cold, rebuke that fever, rebuke that. Notice when Jesus went in the Bible, remember in the Bible when Jesus, uh, uh, Philip's, uh, Peter's mother was sick, he rebuked the fever. He rebuked stuff. The sickness was manifesting in her body, but he rebuked it. It was spiritual. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So usually, most, that's why if you've ever seen true healings, most healing is just deliverance. There was a spirit in that area. There was a spirit of infirmity. There was a crippling demon in the knee of the leg. And, they, and, and, and once that spirit was driven out, the thing worked properly. Amen. The best way I can explain it is like somebody holding you. Somebody holding, like something's holding part of their body, their body, holding it. And, all, and, it's, and, deliver, and, and, and the healing is just let it go. They let that part go. That part functions like the body's supposed to. The body is supposed to come back. The body's supposed to take a hit and come back. We adapt. We come, keep coming back. But when it won't come back, something's holding it. That's when something has gone into a dis-ease. And that is usually when a spirit is attached to it or, a spirit, or, you, or an attack has happened that has hurt your kidney or hurt your, your, your organs or something. You know, Because you can get under spiritual attack where witches shoot arrows at you or something and, 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 and mess up your, and that's the reason why when you wake up, and I send all arrows back to the center, all demonic arrows, I, you got to learn to pray that way. Deliverance is a daily thing. Is this too much? Come on, I'm trying to teach y'all something practical because people, this is what people are calling for, and I want you to know that you make your life easier when you recognize when you rise up in the morning that you have certain prayers. You rise up in the morning, anything that attached itself to me while I was sleeping, I break it in the name of Jesus. Every curse placed upon me in the dream, I break it in the name of Jesus. Everything that tried to attack my home, my finances, tried to set up my day for failure, I remove it in the name of Jesus. I'm walking in grace. I'm walking in mercy. You got to talk. You, this is how you start your day, decreeing and declaring. Because you don't know. You asleep. How you know? The Bible says a man sowed good seed in his field. When men slept, the enemy came in, sowed weeds among the wheat. They woke up, didn't know how it got there. So when you're sleeping is when the most warfare is in sleep time. So that's why when you wake up, the enemy could have sold something while you were asleep. So that's why you wake up talking about whatever was sown in my life, anything Satan has done, anything that crept into my life, I break it, I bind it. Any, any, any curse sent upon to me, I send it back. Any spell, I send it back. You know, I break. You got, that's, how you, that's how you deal with the enemy. This is something you do daily. That's almost like a bath. You just, that's a daily cleansing. Deliverance should be done daily because Satan is constantly, he don't sleep, he's up all day and night figuring out how to attack you. And I told my wife, if you're a person that doesn't believe, don't, if you're a person that don't understand pettiness, yeah. 
then you won't understand the devil. Satan is petty. He will use in a, a hangnail. He'll work on that hangnail. Anything to cause you discomfort, anything to mess with you, to distract you, to get your attention. He's a major distractor. And if he can just get any little thing, he'll do that. And you thinking this is too petty for the devil. No, it ain't too petty. He will use that. Because he knows sometimes a small distraction can make you miss a big blessing. Have somebody call you at the wrong time. Right when you're supposed to go away, somebody, he has some, somebody call with some foolish or nothing. That's why people call me, I always say, okay, what am I going to do? What's going on? Because I'm going to make sure, wait a minute, why, why is this person, especially somebody don't call me? Somebody call out the blue, don't call me? Well, wait a minute, what, what, what they call me for? Amen. Let me keep going this way still, even though they call. Sometimes it's distract. I'm not trying to get y'all to, don't, don't get worded out. But I'm trying to cause you to be aware that you have a spiritual enemy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many times people don't rebuke demons that's trying to destroy their marriage. There are demons assigned to your marriage in your home. And you got to rebuke them spirits. Get up and rebuke them every day. And it's simple. Every spirit in the name of Jesus Christ that is attacking my marriage, I break your power. I bind you in Jesus' name. Amen. You loose my marriage, my home, and my children. That should be a daily prayer. Amen. You should pray that every single day of your life. Because He's working on your home, your children, and your marriage every single day. So deliverance, say deliverance, deliverance. is a daily thing. A daily thing. Now, that don't, now you ain't slobbing, manifesting demons, eyes poked out yet. Then you ain't, going, ain't none of that happening. It just means something's trying to creep in my life that I may not be aware of. And I'm going to do a, 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 a spiritual checkup. Amen. Every time I get up, I'm going to do a spiritual checkup to make sure nothing has attached itself to me. Many people that go out here, get in car accidents and die, or get killed or whatever, how many of y'all know the Lord, when they woke up, was probably trying to tell them, pray, come talk to me. Pray, come on, give me some time. Because I know what the enemy has planned. And I can remove it if you come to me and get an agreement. So you have to, we have to be in agreement about so whatever you buy on earth. It's bam. Whatever you agree with on earth, I agree with. Whatever you lose on earth, I, I have to agree. If you agree, I agree. So when you, if you get an agreement with God and God says, look, there's something up ahead, I want you to bind it. Then because you're in agreement with God, it, it can be bound. But if you don't hear God, if you don't pray, if you don't seek the Lord, Amen. then you literally just walking without cover. Amen. Amen. Walking by his mercy, which is good. That his mercy is there. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Oh, Lord, look at the time it is. I'm going to have to close right here. Last point. There's no need to use holy water, crosses, sacred objects, communion wine, or anointing oil, or, or Bibles on the heads, and all. There ain't no, we ain't, this ain't no exorcism. Exorcism is not deliverance. That's what the Catholic Church is not deliverance. That's, that, that's, 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 uh, that's different. We have the name that is above every name, that at that name, demons bow. So that's the name we're using. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't have to do no throwing no water on people and all that stuff. You don't need that to, for a person to be delivered. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Now, we do use anointing oil because the Bible says that we can anoint a person with oil, especially when it comes to healing. That's, that's biblical. But you don't have to have that because Jesus is the anointing. His name is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Amen? So, so, and that's why I always wonder, well, if I was on a desert island with no oil and no water, no nothing, then what would I do? Amen. I can't pray. I ain't got no oil. No, no, I'm going to just use the name. Amen. That's why he put it in a way where we could always come approach the throne of grace boldly without no bunch of gadgets and, and rem, remnants and all which, and tricks and people. We can just go right to God. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Deliverance, say deliverance, deliverance. is a daily, is a daily Occupation. Sit on your feet. Practice laying your hands on your children, praying over them. Practice it. Practice it. You ain't got to have no deep prayers, but practice praying for them. Practice it. Wives, practice laying your hands on your husband when he's asleep or laying down. Pray over him. Practice it. Because truthfully, women are usually intercessors. A man can't make it without the prayers of his wife. You got to practice it. You won't keep your man, pray. 
Don't talk crazy. Pray. Amen. While you, you, your talking going to run into a woman. Stop talking and pray. You could bind up the whore. Amen. 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 You got power with God. That's your, that's your husband. You don't, you, don't, you don't bind the whore. Don't be saying, I'll buy that whore. You know, you can't. <laughs> you can't buy people. God don't, you can't buy people. <laughs> but you buying the spirit that she working in. See, there's a spirit out of your home. It's a spirit out of your man. And that spirit sent the woman. The woman is sent. She sent. That's what's wrong. And the man is blind because he, oh, he, can't, he can't see. He's under a spell. They don't, this woman don't work the spell on him. And he can't see until his home and everything's destroyed. Then his eyes will come open after he lost it all. But your job is stop talking crazy and acting a fool. And go in the realm that God gave you authority in. And bind the spirit that's after him. You go after that spirit that's holding him. Go after that spirit working in that woman. Because the ultimate weapon against a man is a woman. It's not money or drugs. It's a, the woman. Amen. Satan sends Delilah after Samson's. Delilah is, Delilah is an assassin. Her job is to assassinate men's marriages. Assassinate his, his connection with his children. Take his freedom. What happened to Samson? Took his freedom away. Put out his vision. That's what Delilah's job is. And because we used to have wise women that had Delilah radar. Wise woman, we home. She be praying. Ain't seen no woman. Don't know nothing about no job. What's on the job? She just was praying. I said, wait a minute. She's getting her spirit. Uh-uh, wait a minute. There's some woman somewhere. So, uh-uh, wait a minute. And she go to pray. Ain't said nothing to this man. She just go to praying. And she go to war and laying up all night warring and warring over. I bind that in the name of Jesus. You can't have my home. The devil, you allow. She go to warring over his soul. Because he's just, see, he's, he's working busy trying to get the money. So he's, 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 he ain't thinking about nothing else. Men walk into these stuff. They walk right into it with their eyes on. They walk right into these women. Just walk right into them. And because she's warring. Understanding her authority in the spirit. She moves spiritual stuff out of his way before he even get there. He, she's moving it. So that's how you begin to pray. You ain't never got to argue with them. I ain't, you ain't got to chase no woman down over no man. This ain't Shirley. <laughs> y'all know about Shirley y'all know about Shirley now <laughs> now I don't know if you're going to come out of a bag on me or not this Shirley I'm his woman <laughs> but you ain't got to go through all that calling no women all that you a Christian you have power with God and because that's your covenant. That's you got a covenant with that man. And because you have a covenant, you ain't like no girlfriend. When you go to God, he honors that covenant. And so you break stuff in the spirit realm. All of a sudden, brother say, you know, I think I need to go to church. I just need to, I know what I'm doing is wrong. I was wrong, wasn't I? He's ignorant. He come to himself. He just come to, one day he come to himself. And it was because of you. But see, our women are trained to leave, give up, and they let go without even praying. Most women don't pray one time before they quit. When you know these men are under attack. It's so easy. These, these girls throw sex at men for nothing. It's just so simple. Just, just, it's a smorgasbord for a man. Especially a black man. 
these brothers know. It's a smorgasbord. Especially don't don't have a ring on. Oh my goodness. This is like this is like magnets. It draws women. They oh he's a good man. You would think they would leave you alone, but it's more attractive. He could be blind and crippled. They, he won't, if you want him, she want him. If you want him, she want him. And women used to fight for their home praying. But now they done got wives, they got magazines and women's ministries, and it's easy to divorce them and go on and all that old sisterhood instead of saying, no, 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 no. I want mine. So you pray, and you fast, and you cry out to the Lord. And you bind them demons of addiction and you bind that restless spirit. See, oh, I ain't got time, I got clothes. But see, men get a restlessness. Sometimes it's a midlife crisis, but if they get restless at some point in their life and they start wandering. All of a sudden they don't want to come home, they want to go, they wander, they're going over to the friends' house, they, they want to buy a car, they, they want to buy, they want to do motorcycle, they want to do something. They, they, it's a restlessness. And all of a sudden, doing that, doing that, it's a spirit that got on them. It's a restlessness that starts to make them drive them towards some excitement, and they want something different. It ain't even they don't know what they want, but it's something different. And all of a sudden, in comes Delilah. Delilah comes in, and Delilah is an assassin. She's a witch. Now, the person that's after your husband, that girl ain't bad. She's being used. She ain't, usually they're not bad. They don't know what they're doing. They just see something that they want to. And they think they're going to get it by giving that man all the sex and the, making his life easy and peaceful to, make, to be better than you. And so you have to know that this is a setup. And then, you, then you're in the fight of your life. Because you're fighting for your future. Amen. You're fighting for your children. And when you go to war, you ain't got to argue with that man. You go on the spirit and start crying out to God because one thing God hears is a praying wife. Amen. And he'll get a hold to Listen to how long I'm talking about this. Look, I'm trying to give you a nugget. Do you hear me? Amen. And the reason why this guy's acting a fool, because you're trying to naturally deal with him. Amen. Instead of you saying there's something behind his behavior. This ain't no natural thing that he's doing. Something's after him to destroy this. And if it destroys this, it destroys this. These children are going to be destroyed. So I must take authority and bind the spirit. By, quit being blind and, and, and don't be hurt right now. Get your feelings off of this. Quit being out hurt. Stop! Because your feelings will make you not pray. You'll feel sorry for yourself. Stop that. Satan's after your home. You cry later. Amen. This is a crisis. We'll cry later. Amen. But you go after that spirit after him. And you go to work and watch what happens. This is how God trains us to fight. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Get you some anointed oil when you pray. Put a little bit in the shoe. Anoint his pillows. Anoint his clothes. Anoint his underwear. Anoint all of those things. Put some oil in the cologne. <laughs> you got to get wise. Get it in the cologne. When he spread it, he don't, he don't even know he's anointing himself. Because you're fighting. A wise woman builds a house. She holds on, but a foolish woman would tear it down focused on the circumstance instead of saying, wait a minute, I ain't got to fight with you. God hears me when I pray. I could take up a wailing. If I take up a wailing, you in trouble. All you got to do is just cry out to the Lord. Stay in that posture of just humility and crying out to the Lord. Because in the midst of you going through this storm, God is still using it to get you closer to him. So he needs this experience for you too. But if you focus only on him, you won't see what God is doing in you. Ain't that a good word? God is good. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we know 
that you are a delivering God and you bring us out. No matter how bad and hard it looks, you bring us out. Father, we just surrender to your way. Have your way in our life, our marriage, our children. Father, any child that's gone away, would we just pray right now for their deliverance. Lord, your arm is not too short. You can't snatch them. Wherever they are, Holy Ghost, put a Holy Ghost knot. Snatch them. Yank them up from out of where they are. Bring them to themselves. Any husband and wayward man, snatch him out of the hands of Delilah. Let him see Delilah as an assassin. Let him look at that woman as his death. Let him see her as death. Let him run him out of there. Let her house think of death. Let there be no peace there, no joy there, no love there, no happiness there. Run him out of there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we reclaim. We reclaim what you have given us. We reclaim our children and we reclaim our marriages in our home. We reclaim it. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.